Welcome Doomtown fans to my latest saddlebag review. Today we're going to be looking at foul play. As is the custom, we're first going to look at the dudes in the first part of this video, and then in part two we'll look at all of the rest of the cards. We're going to start things off with a new dude for the bandits. This is Shi Zhang Lu. He's a seven of spades, two draw, zero influence. He's two to play with no upkeep. He has Kung Fu 1. While your stash has less Ghost Rock than each other player, and another player owns this location, Shi Zhang Lu is worth plus 1 control point, and this location is minus 2 control points and does not unboot during the sundown phase. I'm really liking these cheap dudes that we've seen lately, especially these like 2 and 3 cost guys that have no upkeep. And this guy is no exception. I think this is another pretty solid dude. This trait is a little tricky to use, but it definitely seems like it could have a big payout. There's a lot of facets to it. Him being worth a control point could maybe be good. The minus two control points I don't see as being as big of a deal, but the unbooting thing could potentially be really huge in a lot of different situations. You don't even have to control the location. You just have to be somewhere that you don't own, and that's going to make it easy for you to just move this guy kind of in a position to just shut down their deed. This seems like something that you'd be able to pull off lots of tricky plays later into a turn after they've booted a lot of their guys, and the fact that this is also still just a two-draw guy means that he could reinforce some fights and give you a few extra bullets. I also like that he's at seven, although I see that mainly being a good thing for Sloan, I've really seen 7 as an emerging number for Sloan, and I think that this guy would be really nice just as a cheap drop-in dude. He's not going to cost you anything extra. He's going to have bullets, and then he's going to have this uh, trait that's going to be really, really decent in a Sloan deck. I could also see this guy fitting into a lot of different Bandits decks, but that's mainly because I haven't seen a whole lot of people building Bandits decks that are really heavily focused on Kung Fu. This... 7 might be a problem if you played him in your deck, but it'd be pretty easy to start this guy, and if, you, especially if you were doing a Kung Fu thing, this guy is going to have 7 value, and then he's also Kung Fu 1 for the cheap cost of 2. So I definitely see this guy as being more of a starter for the Bandits, but I think he could be a really nice one of if 7s are part of your draw structure. The next dude is also for the Bandits. This is Forrester Cook. He's at nine of spades. He's one stud, one influence, four to play with one upkeep. While he's at a saloon or a casino, your other dudes have plus one bullets and plus one value. This guy's got a pretty sweet trait, but I'm not exactly sure what to do with him. I guess I don't know where to use him within the bandits. This guy, it seems to me like playing saloons and casinos is not much of a requirement. There's lots of good deeds that we already have that are those types, so it's really not a big deal to include some of those in your deck. You could also play somebody like Clementine Lep in your starting posse to interact more if you wanted some more synergy here. But the main thing I'm having trouble figuring out is how to actually get much value out of the plus one bullets and value thing. It seems like to me with the bandits, you're either going to have like the kung fu oriented thing where you're going to have lots of combat shootout stuff you're going to use there, and that's going to mess with your bullets a lot, or you're going to play more of a deed slide style where you're not really all that concerned about the bullets that are on your dudes. So to me, it seems like this kind of thing might be better in some of the other factions, especially if you're already playing saloons and casinos, which I think a lot of decks already are. My main reaction to this guy is he's got pretty good stats, but I really am not sure what to use him for, and I'm kind of feeling meh about him. The next dude is for the Eagle Wardens. This is Joseph Dusty Hill. He's a four of spades. He's two draw, one influence. He's three to play and one upkeep. He's a shaman one. And while he has a spirit, he has plus one influence. While he has a tire, he has plus one bullets and plus two shaman skill. 
I'm really, really liking these designs where it's a dude with some kind of generic stats and that's very replicable with other dudes. But then there are certain bonuses that make the guy way better for his cost if you have certain hearts attached to him. This guy reminds me a lot of Eric Sampson uh, for the Law Dogs, which is kind of the same thing. As I see it, there are two main archetypes of the Eagle Wardens. There's the Dead Man's Hand deck that's based on Danny Wilde and Zachary Deloria, where you're trying to thin out your deck and then eventually you have a ton of stud and you're drawing Dead Man's all the time. And there's the Spirit Fortress deck that generates an enormous amount of influence and then eventually wins with uh, Mr. Waitley. Now, as I see it, this guy would only really fit into the latter of those two. The Dead Man's deck doesn't play spirits, and it seems to me like this guy is just not worth playing if you can't get that extra influence out of him. And even though the Spirit Fortress deck does play spirits, it doesn't play attire, or I've never seen any attire in those decks, so you're probably not going to be able to get the second trait uh, out of him. So for me, this guy is kind of just in a place where I don't know if he has an archetype. He's too low of a pull value for you to really put him in your deck if you're doing lots of spell casting. And as a starting dude, we already have plenty of other options that are fairly comparable. So I think this guy's probably going to sit in the box for a while until we have some more cards to work with him. The next dude is also for the Eagle Wardens. This is Marielle Lewis. He's a 7 of spades, 1 stud, 2 influence. He's 5 to play with 1 upkeep. He has shootout. If your posse has higher total influence than the opposing posse, remove a dude from the opposing posse and send them home without booting. This guy is pretty obviously good. He's not only stud, but he's 2 influence and he's at 5-1. That's pretty affordable as a starting dude. And this shootout thing is great. It's going to just get one of their better dudes out of the uh, opposing posse. And I think with Eagle Wardens, it's reasonably easy for you to have more influence, especially in that Dead Man's Hand deck I was talking about, because you're always pumping Danny Wilde sky high with influence from Outlaw Masks. Now, I think that this card is probably going to be best more as a defensive dude, and at 5-1 with 2 influence, it'd be pretty easy to put this in a more uh, control-oriented deck. So I could see this guy really fitting into that Dead Man's Hand deck. I could see this fitting into other Eagle Warden's control decks. And I think all around this guy is pretty decent and is going to see some play. Next up, we have a fourth ring dude. This is the Tattooed Man. He's a 10 of spades. He's 3 stud, 0 influence. He's 7 to play for 1 upkeep. He's an abomination and he's Huckster 3. Whenever an ability discards a hex on the Tattooed Man, you may place it in your hand instead. And whenever an ability aces a hex on the Tattooed Man, you may place it in your discard instead. The first card I thought of with this guy is Carl Audit, who I think is a really, really good guy that's been held back by the fact that there aren't that many abomination hucksters so if you want to start an all abomination posse you have to play one of the really expensive hucksters you do have fun time freddy but then you can't use his grifting ability so it's really just smiling tom or ivor and both of those guys eat up all of your starting ghost rock now this guy he's still seven so he's not exactly a ton cheaper and he's also not worth any influence but Carl can offset that a little bit, and this guy, I think, is maybe a reasonable starter if you're not too concerned about influence with one of those styles of decks. So we're probably talking about oddities of nature here. This trait also has some good synergy with Raising Hell, which is definitely something you could play in an abomination-focused strategy. I think this card is definitely going to see a little bit of play in that strategy I'm talking about. I think it's probably going to be out of oddities of nature. So I don't really see this guy outside of that deck, but I think he could be an interesting new addition for that deck. The next dude is for the Law Dogs. This is Rirodin Olithin. He's a 7 of spades. He's 0 stud, 2 influence, 5 to play for 1 upkeep. He's blessed 1. He has noon. Boot a spell on him 
to give a dude at this or an adjacent location one bounty, discard the spell if the dude was not wanted when you use the ability. This is a continuation of a theme that I've really liked with Law Dogs lately, which is giving them new ways to give dudes bounties that aren't just the original outfit power. And that makes it a lot easier to play some of the other outfits, especially the Arsenal or maybe Abrams Crusaders. This guy to me seems like a pretty obvious choice for uh, the Arsenal, because if you were going to play Abrams Crusaders, you would probably want to start more deputies and things like that. This guy's not a deputy. But he is blessed one, he's two influence for five costs, and he's stud. That to me seems like it's going to be pretty good in an Arsenal deck. And it's going to give you a way to give bounties to dudes without having to play something like Confession or maybe not playing as many copies of Confession. I think this guy's definitely good enough to see play. Five cost for two influence, blessed one, and he has a reasonable, reasonably decent bounty ability. I definitely think people are going to be trying this in some different Law Dogs decks based on uh, spells. The next dude is for Morgan Cattle Co. This is Lucky Skyborn. She's a six of spades, two draw, one influence, two to play for one upkeep. She's Mad Scientist, one. You may include a sidekick goods in your starting posse as if it were a dude and attach it to Sky at the start of the game. If it's a gadget, shuffle your deck and Sky invents it as normal. There's a lot of great things going on with this card. Again, a cheap dude is pretty much always going to be something we're going to consider playing. Now, there's a card later in part two of this video that's pretty obviously a sidekick made for this card. So we'll definitely bring that up later. But I think it's fair to say that this card just has good stats all around. Cheap, still worth an influence, still worth bullets. If you need a cheap mad scientist in your starting posse, I think this is going to definitely be a card to consider. Now, if we're not using the sidekick thing, I think William Specs is pretty clearly superior. But if you are doing the sidekick thing, I could definitely see Lucky here being a little bit better. I think this is definitely going to go into some gadget-heavy Morgan Cattle Company decks, and this is just a great option as a starting dude. Cheap, worth an influence, and that one upkeep kind of sucks, but you're going to pay it. The next dude is for Sloan Gang. This is Miranda Clark. She's a four of spades, zero stud, zero influence, three to play with one upkeep. While she has a control point, she's plus two influence. And while she has at least two bounties, she gets plus two bullets. Here's an absolutely incred incredibly obvious Desolation Row card. She's not only going to potentially get a control point if she has four bounties, but she's also going to easily get the bounties if she can lead the Desolation Road job. I think this card is just clearly a slam dunk for Desolation Row. I could also see using this in the original outfit, but I've found that that original outfit is just a lot weaker than Desolation Row, so I'm probably going to be trying this pretty immediately in that deck. She's really going to fill a few gaps of your starting posse, I think this is probably better than like Barton Everest or something like that, just because she could potentially be worth that two influence later on. And at three cost, one upkeep, you're definitely going to pay that for what she does. I definitely see this being in most Desolation Row decks going forward. Next up, we have another Sloan Gang dude. This is Elliot Smithson. He's a six of spades, one draw, one influence, four to play with zero upkeep. He has React. After he goes home booted following a successful job initiated by a dude's ability or an action card, unboot the leader and gain a Ghost Rock. After we had a really obvious Desolation Row dude, now we have one that I think is very obviously not Desolation Row. The main problem with playing this dude in Desolation Row is you're going to have to draw one of your jobs that's actually an action card in order to be able to use this ability. You're not going to be able to use Desolation Row. The way this is worded, you have to use an, either an action card or a dude's ability. And while most of the Desolation Row decks do play job action cards, I think that's probably going to be just generally easier to do 
with an original Sloan Gang deck because you'll probably play more jobs. So, I don't know. I don't see this guy really working with Desolation Row. I think maybe Fixer with the original outfit could do some interesting things with this guy. I think original Sloan could really use some boosts, and this guy might be a nice little way to do it. A four-cost influence with no upkeep that has this nice little unboot plus ghost rock effect. The last dude in the pack is a neutral dude. His name is Shelby Hunt. He's a two of spades, two draws, zero influence, four to play with no upkeep. He has shootout. If a dude in the opposing posse has higher bullets than him, he gains plus one bullets, is a stud, and cannot be affected by other players' shootout abilities. This to me seems like a dude that you would play in your deck in kind of an aggressive sort of deck where you wanted to have a card against other aggressive strategies. So to me, it seems like this guy might be a dude that you switch in and out of your posse. You don't necessarily always start him. If you can't make use of this shootout ability, he's really just not worth playing for cost and no influence. You can do a lot better than that. So I see this guy as being best as a dude that you would put in your deck to just swap out if you're playing against another aggressive deck. That's going to do it for part one of my foul play review. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and click the button that looks like a thumbs up. And I'll see you over in part two.